Hello and welcome. We have established that inductive reasoning involves observing patterns that we connect with our previous knowledge to form conclusions. Our main goal is to improve our reasoning ability. We refer to the conclusions inductive reasoning leads to as conjectures. Our conjectures often give us a chance to predict an outcome. With good unbiased observation, the probability of our conjectures being true increases. Inductive reasoning generally starts with small observations that lead us to making more general statements. In the last episode, we focused on patterns that form numerical sequences. Applying our math knowledge, we determined if we could find a simple expression that summarized our conjecture about the pattern. In this episode, we'll explore other types of patterns to broaden our perspective on how we can apply inductive reasoning. We will only be able to check out a small sample of patterns, but want to get you started on trying to look at things from different perspectives, like thinking out of the box. This is one of the most important reasoning skills we're trying to develop. The ability to see things in different ways can lead to new and creative solutions. Some patterns are easy to see, some less so. Sometimes the patterns are visual patterns that can also form numerical patterns like this one. The image's number in this pattern is also the number of squares being added to the bottom row. The total number of squares can be counted to get this sequence. What do you predict the fifth shape will look like? When we add five squares to the bottom, we get this shape, and now have a total of 15 squares. For each of the next few examples, be prepared to pause the video and try to reason through them before the solution is revealed. It's much more valuable that way. Some are easier than others, and some you may have seen. Hopefully they challenge your thinking. You likely picked up on the fact that the line is rotating clockwise around the star one point at a time, while the dot is moving two points with each new shape. So, from this pattern, we would select D to be next. This one is similar. Pause and give it a try. Of course, the number of sides and dots are both diminishing by one. So, A would be the next shape. Each of the first balance scales gives us a small piece of information that we can use to select A, B, C, or D. The color and position of the boxes are important, as is the fact that the correct one should be balanced. Pause and give this one a try. If you are half the distance to the fulcrum, that is the triangle at the balance point, your force is reduced by one half, like two people with different masses on a teeter-totter. And the pink square has twice the force as the gray one. So which of the options is balanced? Sometimes the strategy is to eliminate the options that are clearly wrong while you are looking for the correct one. You should see C is the only one that is balanced and therefore continues the pattern. It can be visualized as three gray boxes at each end. Sometimes if you come up with a really good conjecture that stumps the mathematicians, they'll name it after you, like Collatz conjecture. The pattern in this case are the following math operations. Take any whole number. If it's even, divided in half. If odd, multiply by 3 and add 1. Continue these steps until you end up with 1. OK, this sounds simple. Let's try 10. 10 is even, so we divide by 2. 5 is odd, multiply by 3 and add 1. 16, even, divide by 2. 8, 4, 2, and 1. Pause the video and try a few numbers yourself to see if the pattern works. 
Although numbers into the quintillions have been tested and support the conjecture, it is yet to be proven mathematically. These are the types of conjectures that can drive mathematicians crazy trying to prove or disprove them. Have a go at this one. If you've seen something like this before, you likely solved it. If you're stuck, here's a different perspective. So the correct response is A, the mirrored nines. Again, looking at things differently. Here's another on a similar theme. Here's a hint, a think perspective. When the image is flipped, the pattern takes shape, and we realize that the parking stall number is 87. There are many interesting geometry examples that fit the theme of reasoning. One conjecture suggests that if we take any shape quadrilateral, any four-sided figure, and join the midpoints of the four sides, the result will always be a parallelogram, a four-sided figure where the opposite sides are parallel and the opposite angles are the same. Here are a few examples with the opposite sides showing the same measurements. Surprisingly, the conjecture seems to hold regardless of the shape of the quadrilateral. You can test things like this on your own with online geometry programs. This one may test you a bit. The pattern is not immediately recognized. Take your time as each new diagram does repeat a pattern. Here's the first one. From this, we can see the next couple follow the same pattern of taking the bottom row, rotating it, and putting it on top. So, the next arrangement is C. The spatial awareness of being able to reposition objects is another useful skill. As you can see, there are a wide range of patterns and puzzles to explore. Our sample was only a small cross-section of what you might see. You cannot prepare yourself for every problem you'll need to reason through because, one, there are far too many problems, and two, our increasingly complex world continually creates new problems. Developing reasoning and logic capabilities arms you with the skills to increase your chances of being able to solve the problems you haven't seen yet. It's really about exercising your brain in new ways to be ready for whatever comes next. Neuron connections can be lost as quickly as they're added if we stop exercising our brain, just as muscles atrophy quickly with lack of use. Keeping our brain fit means mental exercises for the things we've learned as well as trying new things, like what we've been exploring, to build new ones. I will keep reminding you that this type of learning goes far beyond cramming for a test where information is shared from short-term memory. Reasoning is the real thing.